Graham, who was the real architect, got up well for the header, got it inside. And then Logan with a little overhead. Russell towards, towards David Graham, who was trying to flick it through for Williams. Oh, Hankin and Woods. A little bit of a mix-up. This is Moody. And that is three all. Oh, disaster for Torquay United then. Terrible mix-up, really, between Sean Hankin and Steve Woods. Hankin leaving the ball, then realising his mistake. And Paul Moody, quick to capitalise. Slotting the ball past Kevin Dearden. This is turning into quite a contest. Ended in front twice at home, 2-0 uh, at half-time. We should really come away with the three points. The one thing we talked about at half time was not conceding a goal, certainly in the five, the first five or ten minutes, and we can see straight from kick kickoff. And in fact, Dime actually missed the goal. So I'm, I'm, I'm told it's a mistake, and we've given them a goal, which is obviously disappointing. And that set us on the back foot, certainly for the next 10, 15 minutes of the game. Um, for enough, when they got back to 2 2, then we started to play again. And uh, really, at 3 2, the game should be over, we should have won the game. So, ultimate frustration for Torquay. They could have done with all three points. But new signings and a new mood of optimism at Playmore. Their next match away to Plymouth on Boxing Day. Well, a run of three games. Yesterday, Argyle's Division 3 lead has now been cut to three points. A sellout crowd of nearly 14,000 turned out to celebrate Argyle's current success both on and off the field. And when Graham Coughlin put the Pilgrims ahead in front of the rebuilt Devonport end, the Christmas cheer was fulsome. A second Argyle goal, little more than 100 seconds later from Ian Stonebridge in the 51st minute, seemed to have wrapped things up. But Brian McGlinchey's face was red as a Santa suit when his bizarre own goal put Torquay back into contention. And he compounded his embarrassment by conceding a last-minute penalty for a foul on Avian Williams. Richard Logan scored from the spot to earn Torquay a well-deserved two-all draw. A penalty also set Swansea on their way to a 3-0 victory at Exeter City. His day against Cheltenham had sent them far too close to the third division drop zone for comfort. And then came the news that some of the girls' players had been seen out on the town in the lead-up to that match. So, how would the side respond at Plainmore against an informed Kidderminster outfit, managed by the former Liverpool star Jan Mulby? Our star in the commentary box, Martin Dean. Well, in a week which has once again provided its share of unwanted headlines about footballers and pre-match drinking sessions, the message from Plainmore couldn't be clearer. Martin McNeil and Christian Hansen have publicly paid the price for their indiscretions on New Year's Eve. Neither will pull on a Torquay United shirt again. Four other players have been privately hit in the pocket. The club is refusing to say just how many of them have been included in today's lineup. But it's the paying public here at Plainmore who might perhaps feel that they've been hardest done by. After all, they parted with their hard-earned cash to see some of those players turn in a below-par performance on New Year's Day. They'll feel they're due some recompense this afternoon, but that's not going to be easy against an informed Kidderminster side who've won six of the last seven games. One blemish in that record coming on their last visit to Devon when they lost to Exeter. Richard Logan trying to make the early breakthrough for Torquay United. And an early touch for Stuart Brock in the Kidderminster goal. Well, unlike the rest of the country, no problems with the playing surface here at Plainmore. It was rolled before today's game. make for a slightly better surface than uh, the players enjoyed on New Year's Day. Paul Holmes back in the side this afternoon with the throw. Uh, Greg Goodridge looking to get it in towards Logan. Took it down well. Just driving it into the uh, side netting. Good lively start from Torquay. Richard Logan just finding a little bit of space to turn in the box. And the shot into the side netting. Steve Woods, forward for Fowler. 
Flick through the middle towards Eppie and Williams. And got in a good block on Danny Williams. Kevin Hill also doing a little bit of charging down. Well, the flag has stayed down. And Henriksen is free in the middle. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. That was a dreadful cross from what should have been a very good opportunity. Colin Larkin springing the supposed offside trap. Acres of space. Henriksen was onside in the middle. Just needed to be picked out. That was a dreadful cross. Better away from Danny Williams. Straight to Alex Russell. Williams battling for it, brought down. Bent on the referee. Still the, the free kick. Straight into the arms of Brock. Watch for the throw this time. And Larkin has made the break. Ducro up ahead of him. Henriksen rushing unmarked into the box. He's on the far post. He's been picked out this time. And that is the opening goal. The Dane, Bo Henriksen. That's his fifth goal in six games for Kidderminster. Probably his simplest jet. Well, he made a late run, but he was unmarked, not picked up as he came through. Larkin this time picking him out with the pinpoint cross. And Dearden couldn't keep it out of the net. Thinking getting it forward towards Logan. Now Russell over the top. Might drop for Effie and Williams this time. Rock coming with the punch now. Was Effie and Williams brought down? Torquay players feel that he was. Now well, the flag is up on this near side. Wendy Toms, the referee's assistant. Question really of whether that was inside or outside the box. Well, Torquay are protesting that it should be a penalty. But I think they're going to have to make do with a free kick from just outside the area. The contact made inside or outside. Well, free kick is the verdict. It's going to be Jason Fowler to strike it. Oh, it's gone right through the lot. Well, I think that Stuart Brock might just have been unsighted. You probably feel that he should have got something on that. But Jason Fowler putting Torquay United back on level terms. Holmes rather misjudged the header. This is Ducro. Larkin made a little run. He had to check back. Bennett on the far side. In towards Henriksen. Oh, that was close to being an own goal then. Well, it was Kevin Hill who got back to make the defensive header. Just for a moment or two. It might have looked as if he judged it a little too finely. Being played at quite a pace at the moment. Danger here again for Torquay. This is Larkin. Oh, and Kevin did and did well. well. The goalkeeper left exposed again. Two Kidderminster players pulled away from the defenders. It was Colin Larkin who got the ball. Probably should have done better, but you've got to give credit to Kevin Dearden for the save. Goodrich hooking it forward towards Effian Williams. Now Richard Logan. Fowler has been very influential. Good cross in. Effian Williams got there before the goalkeeper. Couldn't quite keep the header down. Well, Effian Williams, who hasn't yet managed a goal this season, he looked lively this afternoon, and well, I thought his luck was in then. Got up well for the header in front of Stuart Brock, but just got underneath it, and it uh, floated away to safety in the end. Goodrich hugging that far touch line, keeping the ball in well. Kevin Hill, and now Alex Russell. And he thought about the shot. Now Logan for Goodrich. In towards Effie and Williams, bit of space in the box for Williams, he's gone down. Now, was that a penalty? Well, Mr. Fenton was very close to the incident. He looked at it for a moment and then just turned away. Goodrich with the cross, meanwhile, in towards Logan. This is Jason Fowler. Can he get a shot in here? Uh, 
Oh, just lifting it over the top in the end. Fowler almost on for his second goal then. He was well set up by Richard Logan. Bit of inside to him, and Fowler made a little of space for himself, but the ball perhaps bobbled just a little bit. He got underneath it. forward towards Logan cut out by Williams late through the middle for Appleby Ducro is this side Appleby might not need him he's squeezed it past Kevin Dearden and Richie Appleby puts Kidderminster in front again, right on the stroke of half-time. Well, he fairly strolled through that talkie defence then. Had options to his left, but chose to go for the shot himself. And Kevin Dearden couldn't keep it out. Welcome back as Kidderminster get this second half underway. They of course, lead by two goals to one. Hendrickson and Appleby, the goal scorers for Kidderminster. Jason Fowler replying for Torquay United. Desperately need to get themselves back into this game as quickly as they can now. Torquay, you may remember, haven't won a game. Since the 27th of October. Ten matches without a victory now. And picked up three points out of the last 27. Paul Holmes getting it forward. Appleby turning it back for Brock. Being left, free kick quickly taken. Henriksen under pressure from Hankin. And again, it's been lied. Hankin taking the free kick quickly. This is Larkin. Quickly coming back to cover. Larkin's got away from him. And the cross right across to Henriksen on the far side. And this time rolls the shot clear, but again, Bo Henriksen. Stealing in, unmarked almost on the far post. Everybody leaving the cross. And he, this time, put his effort wide at the post. Kevin Hill. Hopefully outside him. Talking with plenty of men forward, but there are plenty of red shirts back as well. Brock, not very really convincing with the punch, and Richard Logan shot. Well, if it had had a bit more power, it will have crept in. Stumps. Oh, well, it's Russell. And there's a ball for Richard Logan. He's got away from his marker this time. Ian Williams, the only talky man in the middle, although Kevin Hill is also arriving. And it's just picked away from Williams then. And it was Danny Williams who got the touch ahead of his goalkeeper and just flicked it over the outstretched leg of Ethian Williams. Just to prevent him getting the cross in. Now Broughton. Henriksen over the top. The flag has stayed down this time. This is Foster. Chance for number three here. And there it is. Ian Foster. Well, again, Torquay's attempt to play the offside trap. Falling into dis disarray. Ian Foster found himself in the clear, and then it was just a question of whether he could poke the ball past Kevin Dearden, which he did with some ease. And 
taking. Another a weak back pass. Foster might get in again here. It's a good save from Dearden in the end, but uh, they'll keep playing themselves into all sorts of trouble once more. Back pass lacking conviction. Foster able to get a shot in once more. Well saved by Dearden. Appleby with the corner. Headed away partly by Woods. Broughton getting the shot in. A good clearance from Kevin Dearden. Henriksen had the shot from point blank range initially. Kevin Dearden coming to Torquay's rescue then. It was Dean Bennett who finally put the ball away for the goal kick. But uh, full credit to Kevin Dearden. Another good save from the goalkeeper. Fulhammer looking to get it through the middle. Is Kevin Hill cross in towards Graham chance here for Priest. Oh, David Priest could have reduced the arrears then, that's for sure. Flick on from Graham Hill finding Chris Brandon, and he finds a little bit of space here. Well, he's gone one way, then the other. Brandon, well, he worked the opening so well, then Chris Brandon. It's such a shame from his point of view that he couldn't provide the finish as well. This is Graham. Back for Brandon. Might have space for a shot here on the edge of the area. And Brock having to get down well. Could have been an awkward bounce and the goalkeeper got everything behind it. In towards Broughton on the far post. First one was blocked, and then it's tucked in by Ian Foster again. And that is surely curtains for Torquay United now. And the ball fell invitingly for Foster to thump it past Kevin Dearden. Well, it's been a difficult week. Not the best 48 hours that we've had. We were hoping that we'd get a lift from what's happened at the football club today, but we haven't. And What's been disappointing is the fact that we've lost the game 4-1. I don't think maybe that was a true reflection of the score. It, 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 uh, I didn't, haven't said that, I don't think we deserve to win. But I didn't think 4-1 was a true reflection. I thought we just lost our discipline near the end. I know we were trying to get a goal back, but I just thought we, we just lost our shape and our discipline. We had problems throughout the 90 minutes uh, with their front three, our back four did, and, and causes lots of problems. Inevitably, people are going to be talking a little bit about the off-the-field event, uh, events and the decision to, to really basically to sack two of the players and to find four more. I mean, it was something, I, I suppose, that you had to really sort of crack down hard on. We had to. I mean, the discipline at the football club is the most important thing. That's a starter. And sometimes that discipline reflects itself on the field by what goes on there. Um, so you, you've got to marry the two. And, and it was important that we dealt with the first situation, which is what happened. It's not nice. It did happen. And we dealt with it. We could have quite easily, prob probably, although one or two of the supporters may well have known that one or two of the players were out, we could have tried and brushed, you know, kept it quiet, brushed it under the carpet, but that's not the way to do it. We had to deal with it head on, and we've dealt with it head on. Um, and we, we fell the full brunt of the force today from Kidderminster, which is a bigger blow than maybe what's happened before that, because that's the, that's the area, and that's, that's the place where we need to get it right. So United slip even deeper into trouble. Well, let's see how that result has affected the third division table. Torquay are still four points better off than bottom of the table Halifax, but the Yorkshire side have now got two matches in hand. And York and Carlisle, who are also in trouble, rather alarmingly for goal supporters, have three games to catch up. Let's take a look at the top of the table, and it's a case of as you were for Plymouth Argyle. Porter states a demonstration before the game to protest against plans to quit the league unless a buyer is found before the end of March. Lee Bullock did his best to lift the gloom on the pitch, giving York the lead midway through the first half. Torquay rallied in the second half and were rewarded with an equaliser at 10 minutes from time from substitute Marcus Richardson. Plymouth atop, two points clear of Luton, and there's now a nine-point gap between Luton and Mansfield, who have been boosted by Chris Greenacre's decision to stay for the time being. At the bottom, a useful point for Halifax at Exeter, but their goal difference is minus 21, and Carlisle improved theirs to minus 6 with a 6-1 thrashing of Lake Norient. 
Torquay have gone 11 games without a win. It really had to win. The goal started the day in the same league position and just a point better off than at the same time last year. We all know how that season panned out. In the commentary box for United's high noon showdown against Bristol Rovers, Martin Dean. Oh, you have to go back to October the 27th to find Torquay United's last victory, a 2-1 success against Shrewsbury here at Plainmore. A haul of just four points from 11 league games since then tells its own story. Little wonder that manager Roy McFarland has said it's time for his side to stand up and be counted. Well, Bristol Rovers have done just that after looking like relegation candidates themselves. But new manager Gary Thompson has got them going and a return of 10 points out of the last 12. I've seen them now being talked about as possible playoff candidates. Sign of how quickly things can change. Torquay will want to change things from their point of view. And the early header. Just wide of Scott Howey's post. There's Brandon getting up to Kevin Hill's cross. Fowler finding a bit of space opening up in front of him. Now Brandon. Need to change direction. Paul Holmes on the far side. 1-2 with Russell. And Holmes might try the shot. Oh, they almost caught Scott Howey by surprise then. Well, the goalkeeper was a little unsighted in the bright sunlight. He seemed to react late to that one. Having to push it over the bar. Hogan with the flick on. It's fallen for Alex Russell. He's trying to lay it off for Brandon. Hill has got a lot of space on this near side. Chance here for Kevin Hill. Well, he might have done better then. He made a good run, which wasn't picked up by the Rovers' defence. That was a good opportunity, just slicing it off the left foot and wide of the target. Chalice with the throw. Return from Ellington. Ooh, a little bit tight on that touchline. Summer being bundled out of it. Bundled out of it unfairly. Rovers get the free kick. Hillier with the free kick. Didn't. Having to stretch to turn it over the bar. Well, it was probably a little closer to the goalkeeper than Hillier had intended. Still managing to put Kevin Dearden under a little bit of pressure. He responded well, the goalkeeper. Holmes crossed in towards Richard Logan. Might leave it for Brandon. He's trying to get the shot in himself. It's fallen for Brandon. And a good save from Scott Howey. Oh, Chris Brandon really is warming to this new role as a sort of deep-lying striker. Got the luck of the bounce then, and he looked to be in there. Good goalkeeping by Howey, who came out and blocked the shot. And talking after that bright start, I've just faded a little bit. Not quite as much pressure on as they would like to at the moment. Suspicion of handball there. Referee ways play on. Reese with the cross. Hill and Howie just touching it into the path of Chris Brandon. And Torquay have the lead. Well, Fraser Stretton waving play on then to Torquay's advantage. Jason Reese with a deep cross. Good header back across goal by Kevin Hill. Howie was stretching for it. But could do no more than to turn it into the path of Chris Brandon, who gets his first league goal of the season. Walters looking to get it wide for Trevor Chalice. Woods all oh, misjudging it, and Ellington, and that's why he is the striker in form. Goal number 15 for Nathan Ellington. He only needs half a chance. And it came to him rather fortuitously, perhaps. Steve Wood slicing at what was an awkward ball, put it into the air, and Ellington just doing the rest. Foreign with a little chip over the top. This is Ellington. Well, he's got the luck of the bounce there, Nathan Ellington. Still going. Oh. Just wouldn't quite fall for Sergio Omel, who was coming in. Nathan Ellington, not quite how he kept possession then. He got the luck of the bounce to start with. And carved out a nice little opening for himself. Good low cross. Normal, not able to get the telling touch. 
Russell. Played in towards Logan, who's been a winning runner all afternoon. He's turned well this time. And the deflection onto the roof of the net. Oh, so good work then from Richard Logan. He needs to shake off the attentions of Mark Smith. Um, the shot deflected, and just for a moment, it looks as if it might drop in. Logan holding off the challenge well. Looking for space to get a shot in. He's gone the wide way round. Still going. And now a chance for Hazel. Oh, I think that hit the upright. Certainly, there was a deflection. Jones will be penalised. Just grabbing on to Richard Logan. Jason Fowler with the free kick. Curled in towards Logan. And Torquay get themselves back in front. Well, it was a precisely struck free kick from Jason Fowler. Logan getting just in front of his man. And planting his header into the corner of the net. And will that give Torquay United a victory at last, I wonder? Richard Logan getting his third goal since joining the club on loan. It might yet prove to be his most important so far. I'm delighted for our supporters because it's, you know, we haven't produced really not, you know, anything at home. Not, not a lot of good football at home. And we certainly haven't had the results at home that we would have liked. Um, and I think today we've, we've paid back a little bit. Just, it's, it's not much, but it's a little bit. And it's a start for us. Um, it's been a long while coming in terms of us getting a win. We're delighted the fact that we've got a win. But probably the manner in which the way we got them in, the, the win was, was probably more exciting for our supporters and certainly exciting for me as the manager because I thought we really pushed the ball about, created lots of chances. And on the strength of that, we won the game. Great win that for Torquay and you can see just how important it was for their survival prospects down there at the bottom of Division 3. Well, a rare situation. Goals don't come much better than this. A spectacular effort against Cardiff City in the 1994 League Cup. One of the highlights of Richard Hancock's career at Playmore. He went on to play more than 100 games for the goals and he's still involved with the club. He's now Torquay's youth development officer, a role he thoroughly enjoys. I absolutely love it. It's I love I'm injured at the moment, so I can't train. I love to train with the lads when I can join in. Obviously, I've got to s step back and and coach quite a lot of the time, but I love it when there's a, a five side at the end or something like that. There's no doubt on his day Richard could find the back of the net, but he's perhaps better known at Playmore as the man who scored with the chairman's daughter. Richard's father-in-law is Mike Bateson. When you've got the news of the world camping outside your house over a weekend and things like that, you think, crikey, what's, what's going on? But um, at the end of it all, you know, um, I was with Debbie. We wanted to be together, and that was the, uh, that was the, main, th the main thing. Nothing else, everything else was second best, you know. Um, some people probably couldn't handle that, but that's their problem. It wasn't my problem. That was that was their problem. So it, it may have caused a little bit of friction, slightly awkward. But uh, I didn't play on it. I possibly could have done, and uh, I think I did the right thing. When work commitments allow, Richard still plays football for Newton Abbott in the Devon League. He's still only 33 and feels if the situation arose, he could always make a football league comeback. I know I could still do a job, but. Uh, I think it's uh, that's probably caused too many problems if I played. Um, if they were, if they ever were short of players, and they used all the loans up for things, no problem. I could play. I'm still actually registered to play, but um, that's only for emergencies. So the play more faithful might not have seen the last of him. And if Richard could score goals like this on his return, they'd be more than happy. Yes, great memories from Richard Hancock and that unforgettable hat-trick from 94. And so to yesterday's game at South End, Torquay's survival hopes boosted by a win and two draws in their last three games, but facing a really tough test at Roots Hall. Our guide to the action, Andy Gilson. 
And a first touch for Dearden. Good burst forward here by Searle. This pitch extremely greasy. We've had a lot of rain prior to kick off. The rain just ceased, in fact, about uh, 30 minutes ago. And it's a very, very slippery top surface. Now the ball held up there. Hutchins. Long range effort too, and a good start that from Dearden. Well, Hutchins let fly. Dearden right behind that one for Torquay. Now into space, that's not a bad ball. Now it's trying to cross, needs some good control. There's the shot, not away yet. Brandon. Oh, and still. A lot of room here. There's a chance, surely. Oh, my goodness me. And really, Torquay should have made that count. They're looking for the corner. Well, there was an opportunity there. In the end, the ball squeezes agonizingly close. And it just wanted the slightest of touches there. Whipped in there. Good bit of pace on it. There's a header too. Well, that's a good claim. That's a good free kick. A firm header there from Hill. And Flavin had to be at his best. Barry Porter, which he had pushed there, I thought, but nothing given. Not away yet. Good strike. Oh, what a terrific save. Wow. Russell really pulled the trigger there. And Flavin had to be at his best to turn that spectacular round for the corner. So over comes the corner. But they all missed it. It's a real chance and it's in there. Southland are in front against the run of play here. The corner came over, and Rio was there to stab that home. Now that's a promising move. Now then, forward to Brandon, Brandon who's onside. Brandon with a shot, good save again from Flavin. He really is on top form this afternoon. And the ball finally behind for the goal kick. But a terrific run again. And another good start from Darrell Flavin. So once again, Southend pen back. Another high cross comes in. A real old melee there. It's not away yet. It's sure crowd of players are in there. At last, Torquay get what they deserve. And it's the substitute Williams who's got it for them. Eight minutes in time. It's no more than Torquay have deserved. They've dominated this match. 